Hello and welcome back to the Fine Getting Started tutorials. In this video we're going to look at unit testing. It's a topic that's typically been deemed quite difficult for graphical applications, but we're going to see how that doesn't have to be the case with a modern toolkit like Fine. We're going to get started with an application very much like the Hello World code from earlier tutorials. You can see the two main differences. Firstly, I've named the window Hello Person. And in the content, instead of just a label reading Hello World, we have an entry as well. These are both placed inside a vertical box container, so they appear one above the other. And we can run this application just now, and that will show us the components rendered on screen, one on top of the other. And so here we go, the label here appears above the entry, and we can type into the entry a name, and that doesn't do anything just now, but those are the graphical components. As you might have guessed from the title of the window, what I would like to do is to have our application greet the individual when they type in their name. This is a good opportunity to start doing some testing so that we can confirm that the output displayed is correct for the input provided. To do so, first of all, we should extract the interface elements that are going to be referenced in our test cases. This is the label for the hello output and the entry for the input. Instead of passing these anonymously into our container, we'll extract them into a new function and we can call that make UI. It's not a particularly sophisticated function, but it will allow us to perform our testing. We'll return a label and an entry. In a future video, we'll see how a more complex application can be structured around custom types. But for now, we can simply return these two elements and use this make UI function inside our user interface and just inline that. And so now we're executing make UI, passing the label and the entry into our vertical box and the application will run just exactly the same as it did before. But with this make UI function we're able to start testing that the widgets behave correctly. So to make a test like you would with other Go code we'll create a new file. We'll call it main test because our code is currently in the main file. I will set this to be in package main just like the code that we're testing. We will create a test function, test greeting, and like all Go tests, we need to pass testing.t so that it's recognized as a test. And so I save the file, the testing package is imported, and we see that the Visual Studio Code is recognizing this as a test that can be run. Now before we run that, let's actually do a little bit of testing. We have the output and the input, which are defined by the make UI function. So we can call that, and it's going to set those variables appropriately. And now that we have these, we can first check initial state. We want to check that the output is offering an appropriate greeting when nothing has been input. If it's not, we will error. So we can check this by using out.text to confirm the content of the greeting and say if that is not equal to hello world then we should error. We do that by calling test.error incorrect initial greeting. We're not using the input variable right now so we'll just ignore that and now we can run our test. We tap run inside this IDE and the test passes. Excellent! That, I suppose, was to be expected. Let's test something a little bit more meaningful. We'll make use of this input variable for the entry. And we will confirm that the output is updated to match the input that's entered. To do this, we're going to make use of a fine package called test that helps us during testing to simulate user input and validate output. In this case, we're going to call the type function which is going to type some content into any valid input, in our case it's the entry field. And let's type the word Andy. 
And once this has been typed, we want to execute a similar test again. So I'll copy that here. And instead, we want to check that it is greeting Andy by saying, hello, Andy. And if it's not, we'll error with incorrect user greeting. So we can save this file. And unfortunately, Visual Studio has imported an old API. So we update that to v2 and save it again. And everything is working. So now we can run our test. And it's going to run both elements of that test. And this time, it is failing. Now, this is not much of a surprise, because we haven't actually entered the logic that's going to update our greeting. So we can go back to our main code, where we have set up the two widgets, and add the appropriate logic. So we will update this code so that we can capture these widgets in variables that we can reference. The label is our output. And the entry is going to be our input. And we will still return both of those elements, return out and in. But before we return it, we're going to add this element of logic. Now, our entry has a callback function on changed. This is going to tell us when the content of the entry has changed. And it takes a string parameter to a function that we can referenced as content here. And inside this function, we can do whatever it is that we're looking to execute each time it's changed. In this case, we want to set the output to the new text. So we can call set text. And we're going to pass it an appropriate string. For this demo, let me just concatenate these elements together. And that will be hello content and an exclamation point at the end. Now, that should be everything that's needed. Let's go back to our test case and run it again. And our test has passed. This is good news. In fact, now that it is working, we could probably run our application because it's using the same constructor, so it should behave in the same way. So let's just go back to our terminal and run this application again. And this time, let me type in. And you can see that the application is responding exactly like we hoped. I hope this has been helpful and shows how unit testing can be incorporated in your application development. We'll see you at a future tutorial soon.